Welcome to the Tech Talks Daily Podcast, where you can learn and be inspired by real-world examples of how technology is transforming businesses and reshaping industries in a language everyone can understand. Here is your host, Neil C. Hughes. Welcome back to the Tech Talks Daily Podcast. Now, at the end of every episode, I always ask everyone listening to share their story and their area of expertise with me. And do that by simply emailing me, techblogwriteroutlook.com, and come and join me on the podcast. And although, yes, it's great having big-name guests on here from the biggest tech companies in the world, but it's your stories that really make this show shine. And after hearing about my calls to try and have a better understanding of SEO, Brandon Leibowitz contacted me to ask if he could come on the podcast and share some of his knowledge about SEO, social media marketing, Google ads, and and so much more. So of course, without hesitation, I said yes, and I invited him on here to share his story. All of which, of course, means it's time for me to say, buckle up and hold on tight as I beam your ears all the way to Los Angeles, where Brandon is waiting to share his story and hopefully a few tips about SEO too. So a massive warm welcome to the show, Brandon. Can you tell the listeners a little about your journey, how you got here, and ultimately share your origin story with everyone listening? Thanks for having me on. My name is Brandon Leibowitz, and I've been involved with digital marketing since 2007. Got my degree in business marketing, and the first job I got out of college was helping out a company, doing their marketing, helping out with their SEO doing their social media, doing their email marketing, running paid ads, kind of doing it all. And back then in 2007, realized that everyone's going to have a website in the future and that SEO is a way to get free traffic. So kind of focused on that just because why pay for traffic if you get it for free? So that's really been my focus on the past 15 years is trying to figure out how to get people that free traffic from Google, working at different advertising agencies, working at mom and pop shops and Fortune 500 companies and everything in between. And right now I have my own company called SEO Optimizers and really just help people get that free traffic from Google particularly. And you make it sound so easy, but of course getting that free traffic from Google is not as easy as it sounds. I'm curious, what was it that attracted you to the world of SEO? Because it takes a a certain kind of person to to be interested in that world and, and taking a look under the hood at how everything works and getting the most out of it. But what was it that attracted you to that world? Uh, it's just that first job I got out of college. Yeah. It was for digital marketing. Didn't really know much about digital marketing back then. And they said, don't worry. We don't know anything much about it either. We're going to take you to classes and workshops and kind of learn with you. And that's when I kind of realized back then that I feel like this is the future and that I should probably stick with this versus traditional marketing and kind of just fell into it. It wasn't anything I planned on, but just fell into it and realized that also you could do freelance work with it and That's something I also liked a lot is being able to be your own boss and pick up clients here and there. So those two things really drew me into the SEO side of things. Awesome. And SEO, of course, is considered a dark art by many, but I'm curious, you've probably seen and heard it all. So what are the the biggest mistakes that you see people making when it comes to SEO? Um, The one would probably be the backlinks, building the wrong type of backlinks. Because if you build the wrong type of backlinks, Instead of ranking higher, you can actually rank lower in Google. So a big part of Google's algorithm is getting other websites to talk about you. If you build the wrong type of backlinks, instead of ranking higher, Google's going to actually drop you down. So you got to be very, very careful with those backlinks and make sure that you build them from quality sites. And a quality site to Google is a site that's relevant. So that's a big part is making sure that you find relevant websites to link out to you. Otherwise, Google's going to penalize you. And that's the last thing we want to happen. So if we do have anybody listening that's on Fiverr at the moment thinking of paying someone some money for X amount of backlinks to boost their domain authority, step away from the mouse, right? Yep. Anywhere where it's too good to be true or <laughs> too cheap, it's probably for a reason. And also Google's probably buying all those backlinks and penalizing them. So got to be careful. It's really quality, not the number of backlinks, but the number of quality backlinks that you have. That's, that's what ranks amazing. websites. And I'm curious, one of the things I always like to do on this podcast is bust a few myths and misconceptions. So I've got to ask, as someone that's buried in right in the heart of this world, are there any SEO myths that that frustrate you that we can just finally lay to rest today? 
Yeah, no, there's a bunch, but it really comes down to getting good quality content on your website. That's also very important is making sure you have good original content on your website. If you have duplicate content or content from another website, it's going to also do more harm than good. You have to have good original quality content on every page on your website and good quality backlinks. That's kind of the secret recipe for SEO. There's a lot of other things that go into it, but those are the two most important things. If you focus on those two things, you will definitely see a lift in traffic, but there's a lot of other things that go into it, but those two are really what moves the needle and gets those rankings. And there's the old saying as well, especially in IT, that you if you can't measure it, you can't improve it. So are there any tips you can offer on how to analyze your data on, on where people are right now to find those SEO opportunities that uh, that might get them that free traffic from Google? Is there any tips around that? Yeah, no, you definitely have to just try to focus on quality. Don't try to cheat the system or game the system because Google is going to catch you and unfortunately penalize you. So when you're writing that content, you have to just make sure that you have 100% unique content. There's tools like copyscape.com. That's a free tool that will show you if your content's been copied from another page or another website or if someone's stolen your content. And there's tools to look at backlinks such as Ahrefs or SEMrush or Moz to help you look at the backlinks and spine your competitors and see what's working for them or what's not working for them and trying to incorporate those into your own website, seeing what's working for them. Because if it's working for your competitors, it's more than likely going to work for you. You just need to incorporate those strategies. And by looking at the backlinks or looking at their content and their keywords, you can see exactly what they're doing and incorporate those strategies into your own website. So what about um, repurposing content? Let's say we have somebody listening that's written a a great article on LinkedIn and now wants to repurpose that content and put that same article on their website. Is that still a really bad, a big no-no and a bad thing to do? Yep. You have to write original content. You just can't take it from another website and post it on your own website. You're going to get potentially penalized for duplicate content. Whoever publishes the content first, they get all the credit. So if you publish the content first, you'll be fine. But if you take it from another website, you're going to get hit with those penalties. So you have to be careful that you have original content and not taking it from another website or another social media site or anywhere else. But publish it on your own website first, then share it to the rest of the world. But don't do it the other way around. You have to publish it on your website first to get all the credit. So what would you say is the right way to optimize your, optimize your website uh, f- for Google and, and optimize people as well? Is there any, any uh, quick wins you can share with us or a longer strategy? Yeah, no, it's the backlinks. Backlinks yeah. ranks website. So got to build good quality backlinks. And a good quality backlink is, again, something that's relevant to your website. So finding other websites that are related to what you're doing and trying to build relationships with those websites and See if you could somehow get them to link out to you, whether you write an article for them or blog for them or do a press release or do a sponsorship or whatever needs to be done. But essentially you need to get these other websites to link out to you and you just got to get creative with it. But that's really the biggest part is getting those backlinks, getting other websites to talk about you. So the big message really seems to be about getting those backlinks developing those partnerships and being mentioned in the right conversations with the the respected websites and get them talking about you. But the question, of course, I'm going to ask next is how do you get there? Are, are there any ad- advanced link building strategies uh, or approaches you can share? Um, Yeah, just the one I just mentioned, which was the reaching out to other websites that are related yeah. to you and building those relationships. That's the safest way to build backlinks. You don't want to be doing anything spammy, but by finding other websites that are related to you, just going into Google, searching your keywords, seeing who's on that first couple pages of Google and reaching out to those websites and seeing if you can build those relationships with those websites. Because if they're ranked on those first couple pages of Google, Google is definitely rewarding them and giving them a lot of SEO value. So if you get those sites to link out to you, that's going to send a good trust quality signal to Google that you are relevant and trustworthy and hopefully get you rankings, but you got to build those relationships and start getting creative of how to get those backlinks. Also looking at your competitors' backlinks using, like I said, Ahrefs, Moz, SEMrush, one of those paid backlink tools that I mentioned earlier. Those will let you look at all your competitors' backlinks to see where they're getting their backlinks from. Because if it's working for them, it's going to work for you. You just got to 
one by one, go to those websites and look at the ones that are relevant and try to build those relationships with those websites. And of course, the world of SEO has evolved so much in, since 2007 when you started this, and it will continue to evolve looking forward. So uh, what does the future of SEO look like to you? Are there any trends that excite you or any, any trends that you're, you're monitoring closely? Uh, the future is really nobody knows until Google makes those rules, but right now they're just trying to clean up spam. So yeah. the future of SEO and Google is just less spam, more quality results. So that's why Google is always looking for duplicate content issues or low quality content or low quality backlinks because they don't want those out there. They want quality. So that's really what Google is looking at is that quality aspect of things. And we'll have to see in the future if Google's still around, then we'll have to do what Google's saying. But if there's a new search engine, then we'll have to focus on what they're doing. But for the future, Nobody really knows right now. Google runs everything, but who knows if some other search engine like DuckDuckGo or Ecosia is going to take over and start running things. But for now, it's really just in the hands of Google and Google's whole algorithm is all based off backlinks and just got to make Google happy for now. And let's say we have a, a business leader listening, and over the years they've took a few shortcuts. They've built up a huge long list of backlinks, but for all those wrong sites, which has ended up leaving them penalized. Is it easy to tell Google to, hey, avoid those links? They're nothing to do with me. Is there a, an easy way to do that, to, to boost the SEO that way too? Yeah, if you've been hit with, it's called negative SEO, if someone spams your website with, low quality backlinks, pornography backlinks, or pharmaceutical links and things like that. You can tell Google using Google Search Console. Yeah. You go in there and it's called disavow. And you could tell Google, don't look at these backlinks and don't count them. Which hopefully you don't have to do that. But if you do have all those negative low quality backlinks, you could go in and disavow it. But that's something I would do last resort because you want to try to offset it with good quality backlinks. The more quality backlinks you have the more trust Google's going to have. And also Google could kind of see through all those low quality spammy backlinks nowadays that you don't really need to disavow it, but it's still, if you do have a bunch of them, you might want to clean it up because you don't want those weird, strange links in your backlink profile. It's going to throw off Google's algorithm. Well, it certainly sounds like you've got your work cut out as well, fixing a lot of these problems for people. So what's next for you? Where, where do you go from here? What's, what's your vision for SEO optimizers? to keep it growing and keep expanding the company and helping more people with their SEO goals to help them get that free traffic so they don't have to keep spending money on Google ads or Facebook or any of the other platforms, which they do work. It's just, it's temporary. If you stop spending money on those ads, you just disappear. So want to help give people a long-term sustainable way to get traffic without relying on paying for every single click. So trying to just keep it growing and trying to, help small, medium-sized businesses take them to that next level with SEO. Well, thank you so much for sharing some of the myths, best practices, and things to look out for around the world of SEO. But before I let you go, I always ask every guest to leave everybody listening with something. And and for today, I'm going to ask you to leave, leave them with either a book that has inspired you throughout your career or a favorite song that we can add to our Spotify playlist. Is there anything that you would like to leave us with today that we can add to either our Spotify playlist or Amazon wishlist? Oh, I like the book, The Power of Now, just because it makes you realize that you got to live in the moment and don't worry about the future because everyone's always stressed out about the future with digital marketing. They're like, where are those rankings? Why am I not ranking on Google? Because it all takes time. It takes about six months to really kick in and get those rankings. So in the meantime, just you have to be patient and just understand that everything takes time. And The Power of Now is a great book that realizes you only have this moment and just don't dwell on the little things because with digital or yeah, just marketing in general, it all takes time. It's not immediate, but you do the things that Google or whatever you're trying to promote on whatever platform, Facebook, Instagram, whatever platform you're on, you do the things that they're looking for and they're going to reward you. So just be patient and keep working at it and you'll see that traction start moving up in the right direction. And that is the hardest part that you mentioned there, but just being patient. And for anyone that would like to carry on this conversation we started today, we only scratched the surface around SEO. Maybe somebody listening has got a lot of additional questions that they'd like to be asking you. Where's the best way of finding SEO optimizers online? I would imagine you're nice and easy to find on uh, Google. And also the best way of contacting you or your team. What's the best starting point? 
Yes. So for everyone that's listening, I create a special gift for them. If they go to my website, seooptimizers.com forward slash gift, they can find that gift there. And once again, that's seooptimizers.com forward slash gift. And they can find that gift with all my contact information there. Awesome. Well, I'll have the link to the show notes so people can find you nice and easy. Maybe uh, that will act as a backlink too, of course. But um, I love listening to your story today about how you've been involved with digital marketing since 2007. And I just can't thank you enough for coming on here, sharing a little bit of your knowledge and insights around SEO. And uh, love to stay in touch with you, see where this leads. But more than anything, just thank you for joining me today. Thanks for having me on and let me share some SEO tips with everybody. I must admit, I do find SEO a real dark art, and it's something that I've neglected. And uh, I've always instead just focused my time on creating content. So I went all in on a daily tech podcast so I could produce content every single day. But I've never paid as much attention as I should to SEO. And I always thought that that was maybe a bad thing. But listening to Brandon there, it seems that there are no shortcuts. And actually, it's all about patience and producing great content. And, of course, building relationships with other websites in your niche. So maybe there are no shortcuts. It's just about patience and producing content. That is what Google loves. But as you can gather, this is not my area of expertise. And that's why I invited Brandon on here today. And if you too would like to join me, simply email me, techblogwriter at outlook.com or visit my website, techblogwriter.co.uk and And I'll give you this platform to share your stories and your insights too. But that's it for today's episode. So a big thank you for listening as always. And until next time, don't be a stranger. Thank you for listening to the Tech Talks Daily Podcast with Neil C. Hughes. Remember, technology works best when it brings people together.